They still say I love you On that you can rely No matter what the future brings As time goes by Sam, I thought I told you never to play. You must remember this. <laughs> Casablanca is arguably the iconic film of the 20th century. It star equally iconic, legendary, luminous actress Ingrid Bergman. And who better to talk to us about Ingrid Bergman than her daughter, Pia Lindstrom, best known here in New York for her reporting. And as a film critic, she's now the host of the Sirius XM satellite radio show, Pia Lindstrom Presents. I am so glad you're here. <laughs> Hello, to Mary Alice. To dish, to dish. <laughs> Casablanca got three Academy Awards, and it yet did. many of the iconic scenes you say weren't even planned? Well, they had several versions of what they were going to do. The, the script, of course, came and then was rewritten. First, they, the Epstein twins came in, and they were two bright kids, and they did a lot of the humor. Then they went off to make a propaganda film because it was the wartime, mm -hmm. and Howard Koch came in and added the political elements. So, and the ending, they were never quite sure whether Ilsa, my mother's character, goes off with her husband or stays with Humphrey Bogart, the cafe owner. So they, they had two ideas, and they did the ending, they did the first one in which she goes off with the husband and said, well, that's good enough, let's get out of here. Because nobody really was interested in this movie, in making the movie, certainly not my mother. Why? Be because she wanted to, she was planning to do For Whom the Bell Tolls with Gary Cooper, who she really loved. Oh. So, <laughs> she, and, but in, in those days, you were under the uh, guide of the studio system. And if you weren't working, they lent you out to another group to work, another studio. So she so did she this as a loner person? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, for peace sake. Yes, she didn't want to do it. And th th in fact, they were going to shoot that scene that you just saw was going to be shot over again because Max Steiner, who wrote the music, hated that song. <laughs> he hated it. How could mine. you hate that song? Well, he hated anyway. the song. He didn't write it, and he did, had to make the song was there. But he wanted to write his own song because he did all the other music. But they couldn't do it because the second they shot that last scene, my mother cut her hair off because she was going to play in For Whom the Bell Tolls when she had absolutely no hair, tiny, tiny short. So they couldn't shoot it over again. The other interesting thing about that scene is Dooley Wilson couldn't play the piano. I don't know. They hired, he was a, a, a drummer, I think, and a musician, Not singer, like but he didn't play the know. piano. So when they got, it. so you'll notice when you watch it again, that you never really see his hands, or his hands are just sort of <laughs> like that. <laughs> and they're looking over his shoulder or something. Uh, and of course, there was no relationship. My mother had absolutely no relationship with Humphrey Bogart. People have always said, oh, they, they must have known each other, they looked at each other. Well, that's acting. They did not even, she, her famous line was, I kissed Humphrey Bogart, but I never knew him. Just, Ooh, ouch. He, he was, well, he was always in his trailer. He had his own demons. He was in his trailer all the time, Drinking she said. Drinking alcohol? Probably. Uh, oh. And he had a wife who was quite jealous, who thought that maybe there was something going on between my mother and Humphrey Bogart. Not? So she was on, not. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so she really had no relationship with him at all. Did you ever talk to her about why she left your dad for Rossellini? Yes, she fell in love. That simple? Yes. How did you feel about that? As a 10-year-old, yeah. first of all, I didn't have the knowledge to feel anything. I did, Except that your mother was leaving well, you? Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't know she was leaving. You're, you're asking me a question, I have to go back to when I'm 10 years old. Right. She went to make a film. She, she went to make films quite often. This time, she didn't come back because she got pregnant. That's why she didn't come back. With Roberto. Yeah, she fell in love. What's your favorite film that your mother did? Uh, Notorious. I love her performance in it. I think that um, it captures her real essence. You know, what she had was such expressive eyes, which is theater, uh, film acting really requires that. And a part of it might have to do, I've often thought, why? I think it might also have to do with facial construction. 
because if wherever your eyebrow is or your lid would depend on how much the light hits your eye and how much they mm -hmm. show and how much they shine. Her face was um, so photogenic. But you saw the part, her father was a photographer. Uh -huh. You remember that? Uh -huh. So my theory, I'm not a psychologist, but my theory is that as a little girl, um, she looked through the lens at her father. That's where love came through, the, the lens. And she smiled and she was coquettish and she jumped and she played and she was in costumes through the lens to a man. In her later life, she certainly fell in love with a director. Her, her last husband was a producer. But oh, and she had a love affair with a war photographer. I won't reveal all the people she had love affairs with, but <laughs> um, very often it was somebody who looked at her through a lens. And that's why I think she was very comfortable with, with the lens and with the camera, whereas other actors sometimes find the camera intrusive or daunting or they're... I don't, she made love to the camera. That's why she was so good. Well, it's a terrific documentary, and you were terrific for being here today. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>